Hello everybody, welcome back to a brand new episode of Mega Projects. This one is all about seeds that are kept underground, and not like they're planted. This was heavily requested in the comments, so ask and you shall receive, maybe, if I find it interesting. People also were asking about whether I'm going to do merch for this channel, and, well yes I am and I'm wearing it right now. You can get it, and a link below what I've done is that you can't really see it awesome because I'm sitting down. But uh, it's uh, obviously a blueprint, this one's of the A12. There are a whole bunch of other blueprint t-shirts that you can buy on there. I hope you like them. There is a link below and let's get into it. Oh, also, I'll just add before we get started, this is pronounced Falbar. There is no D on the end, and that's how I'm going to pronounce it throughout this video, even though Svalbard is an accepted pronunciation. I'm probably going to screw it up at some point because it's clearly got a D on the end. Let's finally get into it. The frozen Norwegian island of Spitsbergen, which lies within the Arctic Circle, is a pretty brutal place, with temperatures regularly dropping to a bone-chilling minus 20 Celsius, that's minus 4 Fahrenheit for all of you using freedom units during winter, and climbing as high as 7 Celsius, 44.6 Fahrenheit, in the summer months. It's far from being a hospitable place. The island also boasts the unique accolade of being the furthest north that any commercial passenger plane lands. And yet, this icy, wind-swept location is home to one of the most extraordinary human endeavors, a project vast in scale that just might ensure the survival of countless plant species should the unthinkable ever occur. And its name is the Svalbard Seed Vault. The importance of this mega project lies not in size, speed, or glamour. It doesn't receive millions of visitors like some of the other more visually impressive mega projects that we've covered, but if or when our planet experiences a truly cataclysmic event, the vault on Svalbard may turn out to be the most vital project that we've ever undertaken. Quite simply, this vault, which now contains close to a million different varieties of seeds, may facilitate the survival of our species and the plant life that sustains us. <laughs> All I can think about <laughs> is weed. <laughs> like, I really hope they've, they, they've carefully protected the finest seeds. <laughs> there are an estimated 1,750 seed banks around the world. Primarily, they focus on maintaining the biodiversity that we have now. They are backups for what is readily available, but also the vaults for what is endangered or what may have already disappeared from wider circulation. The idea is that entire crops or species could be reintroduced to a region just from the seeds that are kept in these seed banks. But like any tech whiz will tell you, always back up at least twice. As we'll get to later in the video, there have been instances where seed banks around the world have been destroyed by war or natural causes. When a seed bank is destroyed, it may take thousands of years worth of biodiversity with it. For this reason, countries all over the planet send their seeds to the harsh environment of Spitsbergen, where they are stored in the Svalbard seed vault. It's therefore unsurprising that this has come to be known as the Doomsday Vault. It's also a cooler name. Now, it may sound like a depressing place to be starting from, but let's begin with the apocalypse. While we like to think that as a human race we're going to live forever, the truth is far less certain. In fact, we're certainly not going to. Whether it be an asteroid strike, a supervolcano eruption, or some other event that we haven't yet envisioned, our time on Earth is far from infinite. The idea of the apocalypse has fascinated us since we began the long road to self-awareness. It is a concept spanning religions, ancient texts, and contemporary culture, from the Four Horsemen to Mad Max. Yet while in the past we may have accepted our fate as an act of God, we now imagine what might happen next? What if the human race wasn't completely wiped out? How would we recover? What is being slowly put together on Svalbard isn't merely focused on the apocalypse, but make no mistake about it, should it happen, this is exactly where we'll need to go. I mean, it's only going to be a matter of time before Hollywood picks this up. It's going to be the apocalypse, and some hero, maybe led by John Cusack, has to go to Svalbard on like a plane that's going to crash or something like that and save the world. It'll be like the plot of 2012, except less insane. 
But let's not get bogged down with the end of the world so early in this video. How and what we eat has changed dramatically over the last century alone. We have developed technology that allows large-scale crop production on an unprecedented scale. Also, very importantly, the introduction of McDonald's. But it's not all amazing news. While crop yields have surged to unimaginable levels, biodiversity has plummeted. Today, only around 30 crops provide 95% of our food energy needs. If we look at the two most powerful countries today, the US and China, both have experienced enormous drops in food variety. Just 10% of rice varieties found in China in the 1950s are still around today, while an estimated 90% of US fruit and vegetable varieties have disappeared since the 1900s. Now you might be thinking, what's the big deal? We've obviously got the best ones, we've got plenty to eat and it's all pretty delicious. Well, in that case, you're technically right, but you're also putting all of your eggs in one basket, which can have disastrous circumstances. Should we experience severe disease or drought, our monoculture of food production could very well prove to be calamitous. Now, I know this might sound a little bit far-fetched, but honestly, did anyone really think that 2020 would work out the way it has? This shit sneaks up on you. As I mentioned earlier, this is not the only seed vault in the world, but the Svalbard seed vault is the safety net of the safety nets. No other seed bank provides the same kind of security. As early as 1984, the Nordic Seed Bank began placing plant germplasm, the genetic material of germ cells, in an abandoned coal mine on Svalbard outside the small town of Longyear Bayern. In 2001, the International Treaty on Plant Genetic Resources for Food and Agriculture, ITPGRFA, <laughs> It's a hell of a mouthful, was finally signed and began to receive its first signatories from governments around the world. The treaty aimed to establish a multilateral system for plant genetic resources, along with specific rules about use and withdrawals. As of 2020, 147 countries have signed up to the treaty, many of which now keep their replica seeds at Svalbard. Shortly after the treaty was signed, Biodiversity International, a global research and development organization focused on agricultural biodiversity, approached the Norwegian government about the possibility of building a seed vault on Svalbard. The island was seen as one of the best possible locations because of its remoteness, constant permafrost, and absence of tectonic activity. However, a feasibility study carried out in 2004 revealed that keeping such precious treasure in an old coal mine was far from optimal because of the high levels of hydrocarbon gases. If Svalbard was going to host the seed vault, it would need an entirely new location. The site chosen for the seed vault was the side of a sandstone mountain on the island of Spitsbergen, and work was begun on the 19th of June 2006. Rather than go down, the vault barrels 120 meters directly into the mountain before forking into a T at the bottom. If you were walking through the snowy tundra on Spitsbergen and came to the entrance of the seed vault, you'd be forgiven for thinking that it might be the lair of a James Bond villain, albeit one with a bit of a love of art. Its rectangular shape has two plain grey metal doors at the bottom, a large air vent above it, and a piece of art called Perpetual Repercussion by Norwegian artist Dvig Sane above the vents. It is both drab and at the same time it's pretty beautiful. Passing through the entrance, a long, wide concrete tunnel appears, which looks every inch the setting of a post-apocalyptic world. At the end of the tunnel lies the main chamber and coming off it are three large vaults, only the middle of which is currently in use. It is within this middle vaults that over a third of the world's most important food crop seedlings are kept in icy conditions. In total, the vault covers roughly 1,000 square meters, 11,000 square feet, and sits 130 meters above sea level, which in theory makes it relatively safe from rising water levels. That would be a lot of rising water levels. The result of all of this is about as secure as you're going to get for seed storage. The area is kept at a constant minus 18 degrees Celsius with the help of refrigeration units. Should there be a power outage, it is estimated that it would take several weeks until the vaults warm to the same temperature as the surrounding sandstone bedrock at minus 3 Celsius, while it would take at least two centuries to warm to zero degrees C. So, to put it simply, these seeds are very well protected, so much so that it is believed that most seeds could survive here for 
several hundred years, while some important grains could survive for thousands of years. As if the vault itself was not secure enough, the seeds are afforded the utmost care. They're placed in sealed three-ply foil packages before being heat-sealed. They are then stored in plastic tote containers, each carefully marked with its country of origin and details about what's inside. Each seed sample typically comes with 500 individual seeds, and the vault can hold 4.5 million samples, or 2.25 billion seeds. The vault aims to hold replicas of every sample held in seed banks around the world, but with less than a quarter of capacity taken up, well, there's plenty of room to still do that. The Svalbard Seed Vault was officially opened on the 26th of February 2008, though the first seeds, totaling 18,000 samples, had arrived one month earlier. By the vault's first anniversary, that number had reached 400,000, including 90,000 to commemorate its first birthday. This group included 32 varieties of potatoes from Ireland, 20,000 samples from the U.S. Agricultural Research Service, along with others from Canada, Switzerland, Colombia, Mexico, and Syria. This brought the total number of individual seeds stored in the vault to over 20 million. In 2015, the vault authorized its first withdrawal as the civil war in Syria neared the city of Aleppo, home to the International Center for Agricultural Research in dry areas, Icada. The center was hastily moved to Beirut, but because of the difficulties with moving large amounts of samples, some copies held in Svalbard were sent instead. A second, more substantial withdrawal was made two years later. Since then, samples grown have been returned to Svalbard. These remain the only two occasions when seeds have left the vault. It would be a stretch to use the word lucky with the devastation that has fallen on Aleppo, but in an agricultural sense, many of the seeds at Icada have been saved. The same cannot be said for seed banks in Iraq and Afghanistan. Both were destroyed without backups in Svalbard, meaning potential certain strains of plants or crops have been lost forever. A seed bank in the Philippines was also devastated, this time from flooding and then fires. As terrible as these examples are, they highlight the vital work being done at Svalbard. In October 2016, higher than average temperatures caused large amounts of water to seep into the tunnel. While the waters only reached 15 meters down the corridor before freezing, it was enough to sound the alarm, and some upgrades were made to the vault, including exterior drainage ditches, waterproofing of the tunnel walls, and the removal of heat sources inside the tunnel. On the 26th of February 2018, the vault celebrated its 10th anniversary, with 70,000 samples being added, bringing the total number of samples to just over 1 million. That's a total of 500 million individuals. Seeds. The vault cost $8.8 .8 million to build, that's $10.5 million today, and on average it costs $310,000 to maintain every year. The seed vault is managed under a tripartite agreement formed by the Norwegian government, the Crop Trust, and the Nordic Genetic Resource Center, Nordgen. It is primarily paid for by donors, with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation being one of its primary supporters. It's probably fair to say that the world has a lot on its plate right now, but food production is going to be yet another enormous hurdle that we will need to navigate in the future. As our climate changes, droughts, forest fires, and storms appear to be on the rise, and who knows what kind of impact this will have in the future. The Svalbard Seed Vault, and indeed seed vaults around the world, continue to quietly maintain the knowledge and crops that we have, and those that are quickly disappearing. Right now, the biggest threat to global seed banks is not from war or natural disasters, but from our own apathy. These banks, they're woefully underfunded, with Svalbard fortunately being one of the lucky ones. Humans, we've taken food production for granted, in the first world at least, for a long time. What the Svalbard Seed Vault and its many partners are doing is trying to preserve not only our crops, but our way of life. We love to fantasize about the end of the world, and yet we blindly turn away from the genuine possibility that one day something as simple as corn or maize could easily be devastated by an unknown disease. If this were to happen, reserves would begin to run out in a matter of months, and the effects on the food industry would be absolutely disastrous. But seed banks are not merely for doomsday scenarios. They also focus on education and cooperation with countries around the world. Nations can apply to use seeds from any bank in our fractured world. This network of seed banks remains a glimmer of hope that we can all work together. The DNA found within plants no longer in use today may well hold the secrets to food production in the future. Perhaps we will need a corn variety that can grow at a higher temperature, or certain wheat that is immune to a specific disease. Of all of the subjects we've done here on Mega Projects, very few, if any, hold the same kind of global importance as the Svalbard Seed Vault. What is kept buried in a sandstone mountain vault on a desolate Norwegian island represents our last stand. 
If everything else goes wrong, it is here that we will turn. Maybe we're not talking about the apocalypse, but as the world changes at ferocious speed around us, it's foolish to believe that everything will just remain the same. It is somewhat ironic that almost all of the seeds in the Svabar seed vault would have next to no hope of ever growing on Spitsbergen. The thick permafrost would prevent them from ever breaking through. But it is this very permafrost that protects our most valuable asset. Forget oil. Forget gold. If the seeds disappear, so do we. So, I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, well, please smash that like button below. If you're not subscribed to this channel, and I know most of you aren't because I can look at my analytics and see that, well, do subscribe because we do three brand new videos every week here on Mega Projects. Also, please do consider checking out the merch. There's a whole merch store with a bunch of blueprint designs just like this one. Probably not for the Seed Vault because that wouldn't be such an interesting blueprint but there are some cool ones over on the merch store which is linked to below and thank you for watching